Hello guys, Cool Yoshi here. Welcome back to my 100% playthrough of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, continuing again with Super Mario Galaxy. We are so close to finishing the game. There's seven stars left to go, but we are forced into yet another very difficult star again, in the form of Daredevil Comet. This is the hardest Daredevil Comet in the run, and honestly, I don't even know what's gonna happen beyond a couple of other stuff. <sighs> honestly, man, I'm kind of getting tired of this game, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I watched a couple of sea strategies, but beyond that, I'm not actually willing to do anything. I'm not really interested in doing stuff, so we're just gonna go for this normally and go through a no damage run, hopefully. Because, yeah, that's really annoying. Kind of learned to loot for this, but from there I'm not gonna really save much else, cause there's still lots of problems that have to be done. Right. <clears throat> Not gonna lie, man. I don't know why I honestly tried that. I should probably just try to pay for strategy. I saw someone do that, that's why uh, I tried that. The only really good hope is if you collect enough star bits throughout the level, you can get a little bit of extra farming in addition to some extra lives. That's what I was really worried about, by the way, going too fast and getting attacked by those fiends there. But, I don't know. <sighs> the biggest problem is pretty obvious, uh, having to do the lava run at the end of this level is obviously gonna be the most difficult part and I died there as well see I'm so used to doing other stuff that I'm uh, yeah it's fine I knew I was gonna die on this by the way I don't know how but I feel like I, I I'm pretty sure I'm, I was gonna die on this anyways even if I found a way to it through it somehow Yes, I'm so used to doing the quick mode, and that time I was too slow there. Okay, I can maybe make this, uh, except uh, unless that happens. If I had that had not happened, I would have made it. I honestly don't even know what safeties are better. You know what? I will wait. Doing fumes. <laughs> Just adding in some safety strategies as I go along, and on this next spot, we'll go left. Obviously, since it's been a while, it's pretty obvious that I've not memorized this pad to its full potential. Also, it'd be not fun if I count out any deaths, so I figure it'd be fun to keep the fails in. Okay. So the biggest problem with it is basically everything. If you get hit by even a single thing, you die. If you take the wrong path, you die. 
And if you go too early on something, you'll die as well. There's just lots of things that will kill you. Okay, that should be it for that part. And yes, every single planet is obnoxious in its own way on a Daredevil on, just because of the fact that you have to deal with so many different things at once. You don't even get coins for them, you just get the satisfaction of destroying them. That always looks really scary, but thankfully that's, um... Now this one is not necessarily the hardest. It is fairly linear. It just has a, one single obnoxious part at the very end. Right. <laughs> or is he skip to skip over half of this? But I hate skips, as you know, so we have to do the normal strategy of just, uh, walking through here and adding in some line jumps as we go. And skipping as many platforms as we can. And we'll wait for safety on this first one. This is probably my least favorite part. As you can see, it gets dangerously close to lava there. Every bonk in particular is what really costs you a lot of time in this level. What's the point of even killing those fanes if we could just go straight to the end and do some other stuff? Alright, we got through it. From... What I'm guessing in the casual part, I'm guessing the first part was the most difficult. Which I guess makes sense, because yeah, I died in that a lot. But there we go, Daredevil has been conquered, we do not have to deal any Daredevil planets again. We do still have one Cosmic Clone Lace, but hopefully that will not be quite as obnoxious as ever stars, simply because of the fact that there's way harder things than that. Anyways. I may as well show you what we did. We completed those two galaxies, and I relearned uh, Melty Molten Secret and found Dusty Dune Secret as well, so I have a new idea. I'm actually going to be going in the middle of one of the levels the last time, whatever. And I'll be selecting that, uh, and that will be what I do. But yeah, anyways. Immediately after finishing us, we're heading right back into the same level we did before, only this time we have to do some star bit farming for a hungry Luma at the end. I will say, anytime we have more than free life, it helps out a lot. There's a couple of chicks we could also use to get up, so we'll go ahead and use all of them. I hate that wall jump part. I don't know why it uh, does that. So, yeah, as you can see, you can sneak between those, just barely. Funny enough, I was able to do that on my first try. Okay, so by failing to get into this, and then just ground pounding on us right away, you get a bunch of star bits in here, and then you can just fling yourself back up to this area, and then... That'll get you most of your star bits. We actually get so much that we uh, get an extra eye from it. But now we can actually uh, do this secret properly. After this, we need 
one more star in addition to the other stuff. And then we'll be done with this area, hopefully. At least the route that I've found, at least that I've done is... Yes, I know there's a hungry Lua at the end of this area. I mean, uh, in garden. But I'm gonna do that after I've 100%ed everything, just because of the way it teleports you back. It makes no sense. So anyways, we're taken to a mostly slow and obnoxious secret planet. There are skips we could do, but we're gonna actually wait until we collect something else later, and I did not uh, do that. Any, I said I would do that, and I immediately died for it. Now I'm kind of on the run here. Okay, not anymore. We collected a coin. This is kind of a weird route. For the entire thing, I did not even think to lawn jump once. Okay, now we lawn jump, so we should be fine. Right, now we can do lava boosts to skip some of the cycles, and we're gonna be doing it at the end, in particular. Once we figure out where some of these things are. I know we can do it sooner, but... I kind of just went in the middle of that and not even caring about that. When you have six life, you can do a lot of different strategies, such as this. We're going to actually damage boost to the lava. Sort of, except it actually spawned below me. I thought I was above. The gravity was trickery. So reality, I should have jumped down. I did not see it. I thought I was going to be over to the left, but... Well, all right. It's fine. As long as we survive, it's fine. Yeah. Alright, now the purple coin mission. This one's thankfully... Thankfully not another one where you can die, but then again, it's also very brutal. This is one of the few purple coin missions where you can actually die in, and it's also one of the hardest hunts in the game, with several different spots to collect, and they can get obnoxious after a while. Nice, so you caught it all three of those at once. Jeez, I nearly jumped to the ladder there. That would have been silly. You could obviously understand why this is would be a hard purple koi mission to do the hunt in. Simply because obviously uh, it's a lot more obnoxious than everything else. And uh, the way you're supposed to technically could be kind of annoying. This one's kind of cool. You go, let it go down all the way to the end, and then uh, you purposely... Well, you're supposed to jump after that last one. I wasn't expecting it. And then another cool strat. Ground pound in the right spot. You can actually uh, get through that a lot early. I don't like any of these enemies, so we're going to kill them. Okay, 
Okay, made it. For the first start. We could get more on the right side, but there's a thing that has to be done first. Okay, missed the trick again, unfortunately. As you can see, I, this fight's not quite friendly for a purple coin. Uh, there's uh, traps everywhere that'll get you healed. Oh, there's this as well. Not where it's supposed to go. Uh, just say so I could be going quicker, but I prefer to take my time so I don't die. That's the most important part when going in, is to avoid death. Okay, now for the next part of the October to the volcano. Stay. It'll try and pull you in. Get a spin, maybe, to get it. And use Mario's feet to touch that. And then avoid it the second time. Do nothing, and Mario will go straight to the area from there. And now we just have to get the coins behind here. And to the left. If I missed anything, it's probably going to be in the middle or something else. Also, that coin that I ground padded for, that's probably the coin that everyone misses when they first play this uh, level. Which makes sense, because it's kind of shrouded behind another one. Nearly got hit by that. That was scarier than it needed to be. If that spin wasn't a pain in this game, I think it would have died at least several times by now. Now, there's quite a few different ways to finish this off. One strat is to actually finish uh, using the coins on top which uh, could save some time if you're able to get up to here but I like to just uh, get every fade first and then come back here of course it means we have to go back up but it's fine as long as we uh, get into the thing that is I don't think that's the last purple coin mission I still pretty sure there's like an arrow one Beyond that, though, we need, I think, one more Hungry Luma and two more actual regular stars. So, in case I didn't tell you, I'm going to be going to 119 in a total uh, star count. Then, once uh, I finish that. Okay, now we're into Matter Spatter Galaxy. Matter Galaxy, I was planning on invading for the longest time, and you probably already know why. It's argu it's in the last world, so it's going to be one of the tougher of the secrets. But did you know there's actually a secret that is even harder than this? <laughs> it's crazy. This first room looks the coolest because you could do a bunch of long jump spamming, and if you time it correctly, you can actually get through a lot of the area with uh, just long jumps if you're fast enough. Thankfully, it's not actually that hard. Because as the things move around, uh, you'll get through stuff. This is probably my least favorite part, having to do a segmented wall jump section, and then following this will be a couple of Oscars. Yeah. 
Yeah, cause why not? I have some random mad Koopas. Okay, this is the longest section, arguably. Which, uh, if you were doing the right gear game, aim, uh, 100%. It's the only time in the entire game where you have, are actually arguably required to use the Sprain Mushroom. You aren't able to get up our wise. Which is kind of unfortunate to say the least. Most of this is just stalling and waiting for the platforms to appear and then just heading up there as soon as you possibly can. Beyond that, there's nothing much else to talk about. It's an auto score, and it's gonna be really so. Of course, we already dealt with a very hard auto score. This is the part that gets the trickiest because it's like, oh, you could go up to the left. But no, you don't actually need to do that. You can go over here instead, and that'll work. You can jump early here to get some more star bits. Pretty sure we still need one Hungry Roma, so we need to make sure we deal with that. We've gone for the left side strategy. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, dear. Dude, I nearly died in that. That would have been bad. It is possible to exit uh, early, and I was trying to do that, but it didn't work. Oh, by the way, the auto score does not end. This time, it's a lot more difficult this time. The idea of this one? Don't give in to temptation to greed. Follow the star bits, but follow other stuff. If you don't follow them correctly, you will die. Oh, and spend a lot. For this first section, we have to stay in the middle, but once the thing turns red, I believe we'll have to scurry over to the left after a little bit of timing, because the left will have our true path that'll allow us to get to the end. Otherwise, we have to do a pretty tricky dump at the end. And yes, I do remember this. It's not necessarily going to be risky right now, though. It's going to get more riskier once the path splits off. Right about here. Ah, uh, sure, if it's, like, true. Yeah, see, right there. That's where you would probably die as a kid. But if you take the left path, you won't need to spin jump at all, and that makes it a little bit crazy. Okay, well, we had to long jump there. We could actually long jump and reach the star as soon as that platform is available, but a miss causes a death, so there's no reason to go for that. Just play it safe. The only good thing about the secrets is that they don't have the comet feints attached to them, so they're not necessarily as difficult as the comets can be, but they're definitely hard in their own way. Alright. Final Hungry Luma of the game, and I do have more than enough Star Beds to feed him. I chat, I have 4,000, I think, which is a little bit too much. And there goes that trick again. There we go. That was strange. That's what I was worried about happening on some of the other, other Hungry Lumas, because then they wouldn't do stuff. Because, yeah. Right. I believe this is the last Hungry Luma star, and it's also one of the more interesting ones. Rather than being a regular secret, we actually have to face off against the bunnies again. I found out that this is a bunny challenge, and that means, yeah. These star bunnies, however, are way too fast, so... How are we going to defeat them? We have to trigger those question mark blocks, which are split in five areas between the area before we even think about catching them. And then once uh, that's done, we need to find all of their hiding spots, and then we can trap them in one of the areas at once, either on the top or to the left. 
And yeah, it's also a timer. The actual timer is pretty nice though, and also you can use your uh, thing to uh, go for the snow. And yes, I remember most of this from later. You definitely have to uh, get all these later, right now. Anyways, the last one is hidden in one of the secret areas, which I forget where it is. Okay, it was up here. Doing that will trigger a firepower to appear, as well as a open up both secret areas, which will allow us to actually find the stuff properly. So now the ghost to simply release the two bunnies in each area. The biggest problem I think right now is actually fighting the one hidden in the cell. I know there's one probably hidden in the cell, but I actually found it. Oh, yeah, you see maybe a light? I don't know. The most obnoxious is not necessarily this uh, one on the right, but uh, there's one that's hidden in the cell. I know that much. Yeah. Uh, one of those will have the bunny. Well, we can just consider this first life, uh, life, uh, test run, because obviously, uh, we did not have enough time to do that. Also, uh, if you return to Zeratory during this mission, uh, you get, uh, sent here. We have quite a few lives, so what we'll do for our second attempt is if we do not get on the next one, we'll just straight up have to take the timer death and retry. And yes, it's actually a lot more obnoxious than you think. One of the bunnies, I believe, is actually hidden directly in the cell, which is absolutely brutal. I feel like that's a brutal position for them. Right. But anyways, we have plenty of time to go, so I'm not too worried about failing. I'm just... Jeez. I thought I got in there, but then I didn't. So stupid sometimes. Two of the stars left, by the way, are comments, and another one is a secret. Okay, well, at least we can skip this. Oh, wait a minute. I just realized. I was blocked from the beginning. I was blocked from the beginning. Or whatever, I don't know. I just realized I don't have a shell for that chest. <laughs> Holy crap. That's stupid. I'm gonna go for a slightly faster stage. One. Billy, that's a fake. Jeez, I nearly got underneath that one, which would have... Oh, there's the our shell. I was wor worried where that would end up being.
We know there's still one out there, which is why we're trying to find it. Ah, finally! I was hiding in that stupid grass area. That I hate. So now we have to trap each of them to be in the central area, which we could have probably done sooner. Then we, then they get stuck in this area, and you can catch them one by one pretty easily. <laughs> right, okay, we did it that time. That's normally actually an easy star to do once you know what you're doing. I saw a speed run for this, but I didn't catch where the actual buddy was hidden. That's when I figured out it was probably hiding in one of the sneaky craters. It's just that uh, I did not uh, know which crater or fighter it was actually correct. Which is kind of annoying. Three stars away from finishing the game, boys. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for this to be done. Uh, so we have one more left in the bedroom, which is probably a comet. Oh, wait, no, that's the secret. And two left in the engine room. Okay, where am I going? Jeez, Elise. Alright, we're gonna start with the engine room. Whew! We don't actually have any- have a way of spawning any of these stars again, so... Guess what? We're gonna have to do one of these stars again, but I don't have time for that, so... I'm gonna cut between each star until each of the cards show up. I'll be right back until then. Yo, guys, we're back. Sorry about that. We're into Toy Time Galaxy comment, and I feel like we could have easily did more cards here between missions. I was initially doing that until they kind of stopped appearing, so yeah, I did the first mission of Sea Slide again, just because I'm not a fan of doing any of the other ones, or at least it's the fastest one I know to do count. Actually. So now we have to do this uh, same level again in the secret area, but with faster foes. This is the tougher of the faster foes one, because it's very more likely that you'll get squished. I mean, everything has to be timed exactly precisely, and all the other secrets have to be timed precisely as well. Beyond that, there is actually a couple skips that can help us out. Beyond that, there's nothing really else to do. I'm gonna get rid of this, so it doesn't block me later. The particular problem with all these stars is just being in the wrong exact place at the wrong time. And you can get squished on these corners. I made it. That was scary. That could have been very scary. Obviously, the flump things moving around are obviously the scariest things you could deal with because, uh... 
uh, they will uh, kill you immediately while these things only deal just like one damage and there's coins anyway because yeah if any of the fat things hit you or squish you ever you will be dead immediately that's the problem with fast rolls that makes it so difficult Well, we did it this time, and in a much better way this time, not forgetting one of the stuff. And each of the spike pillars will stop now, so we can go down them in any way they want. And that takes care of Toy Time's comment, which is pretty cool. So we dealt with that, and now we have... Uh, one more star to go after this, including Dusty Dude's Secret, which I will actually be doing sort of off-screen, sort of not. I'll be kind of just doing some stuff, and then I'll show you later. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I did that. I guess I wasn't thinking correctly. I will be right back uh, in a minute. Yo, boys, we are back <laughs> with the Cosmic Con and Orbit. There's a reason why I skipped this, is because I don't believe I've actually done this common either. Well, then again, I haven't done many of them, but... Ugh. It's another Cosmic Mario race, and it's something that I've never really been fond of. It's really staying stupid, and it's hard to know what the proper path will be. So anyways, it's a race to the lighthouse in this case. I'm still trying to figure out what the start thing is. I think what you have to do is like hold A and B together. Mario preps himself and I believe you can then get uh, the start. The biggest problem is probably the ending of this, simply because of what uh, you have to do to get to the end. Obviously the Luigi version of this is even more difficult because Luigi will move even faster than you and sometimes take a different route entirely. Uh, for those, the way I'm probably going to end up having to do them is I will have to spend an attempt watching Luigi uh, do, do the attempt and then just mimic Cosmic Luigi's attempt in hopes of getting a good run, and that's about it. Well, with that done, we are finally done with every single comment in the game at long last. Cool, I actually got the strategy I wanted to get. Into the bedroom we go. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed, by the way. Cut right to Skype, and I'll see you in the next video where the true finale will actually begin, where we play the last level of the game. So then, leave a like if you enjoyed. Cut right to Skype, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.